The story about the discovery of the Americas usually goes something like this. In the old days, people believed the earth was flat. Then Christopher Columbus came along and said, no, the earth is round and I will prove it by sailing west from Europe and reach India. Encouraged by his bravery and conviction, Queen Isabella gave him three ships and wished him Godspeed. And he sailed away into the sunset only to discover land that was heretofore unknown. He claimed them to be the undiscovered lands of the East Indies and with the mission a success, came back with the riches of Asia for Queen Isabella. His bravery encouraged others to follow his example and it wasn't long until Amerigo Vespucci discovered that the islands while east of India were not the East Indies and therefore named the new continent after himself as America. The End Now this summarization, while held in popular belief, is almost entirely false. To quote a cliched yet apt idiom, the devil is in the details. I wanted to make a video describing the four voyages of Christopher Columbus to the New World. But before that, it would be beneficial for us to dispel some myths around the folklore surrounding Columbus. Myth number one, Columbus discovered the Americas. People were already in the Americas for thousands of years before Columbus arrived. The first humans are presumed to have crossed the Beringia landmass connecting Asia and North America between 24,000 BCE and 11,000 BCE. Entire civilizations and empires had risen, fallen, and risen again by the time he had arrived. Cities like Tenochtitlan were more populous than some of the largest cities in Europe at the time. Myth number two, Columbus was the first European to land in the Americas. Even by conservative estimates, the Vikings from Iceland and Norway had traveled to and created settlements in Greenland and North America. Almost 500 years prior to Columbus's first voyage, making the Vikings the first Europeans to land in America. However, the Vikings didn't necessarily have the friendliest relationships with the other European powers to share this knowledge. So their rediscovery of the Americas was, to put it crudely, the equivalent of a tree falling in the forest with no one there to hear it. Myth number three. Most people believed the earth to be flat until Columbus proved them wrong. People had known that the earth was round for more than a millennium before Columbus. Greek scholars such as Pythagoras, Plato, Aristotle, and Eratosthenes made these observations with mathematical calculations. Eratosthenes was also known to be the first to calculate the earth's circumference as well as the tilt of its axis, which was astoundingly accurate for his time. During Columbus's time, educated members of society, including the monarchs of Castile, studied the teachings of the ancient Greeks. If anything, Columbus made a mistake by thinking the Earth's circumference was significantly smaller than it actually is. For example, according to his calculations, the distance from the Canary Islands to Japan was almost 20% of what it actually is in real life. Myth number four, Columbus was a hero and a visionary. All right, now this is the part where nuance makes a big difference. Columbus played a pivotal role in the re-rediscovery of the New World. He and the explorers who came after him created one of the largest cultural and biological exchanges that the world had ever seen. However, he was also a slaver and a mass murderer. He oversaw the rape, torture, and murder of innumerable native dwellers. Now, it might be easy to discount this fact by ascribing this behavior to him being a product of his time but there is evidence that he had contemporaries who did not subscribe to this ideology of raping and pillaging. Here's an example to elaborate his brutality. The stated purpose of Columbus's second voyage was to convert the indigenous population to Christianity. The purpose was advocated by the Catholic monarchs who funded his mission and instructed him to, quote, maintain friendly and loving relations with the natives. To further this goal, Columbus was made the governor of the Indies. However, Columbus deliberately delayed this mission so that he could enslave and sell the native population. The mythical goal that he had promised to entice Spanish settlers was not easily found. So Columbus decided the source of his riches in the interim would be through the trafficking of the natives. 
He even executed and dismembered Spanish colonists who spoke up against him, further enraging them and causing many rebellions. When word of the unrest reached the Spanish monarchs, they sent Francisco de Bobadilla to take over the role of governor from Columbus and investigate the accusations against Columbus and his brothers. Bobadilla's inquiry produced testimony that Columbus forced priests not to baptize natives without his express permission so that he could decide first whether or not they should be sold into slavery. Columbus and his brothers were later tried for their crimes and sentenced to imprisonment for defying the orders of the monarchy. So to summarize, Columbus was a barbaric, ruthless slaver and even for his time, not very heroic. And we haven't even touched upon the countless lives that were lost in the Americas through the introduction of diseases such as smallpox and syphilis, which they had no exposure to and no immunity against. There may be more erroneous folklore about Columbus that are repeated in popular beliefs, but these four seem to be the most egregious ones that deserve to be corrected. Now that we have divided the man from the myth, in the next video we will get into the details of the four voyages that Columbus took to the New World. Even devoid of the exaggerations and falsifications, these journeys should not be undermined for they include unique maritime achievements such as the use of the Atlantic trade winds to help assist sailors on oceanic travel. For better or worse, the world would never be the same after these voyages.